and welcome. Thank you for joining me today and lending me your ears. A special shout out to all my friends, family and subscribers. I now have over 300 and you've given me encouragement to be more informative on my videos. Thank you. Also, a special shout out to a fellow rifleman, you know, a good friend of mine, Andy. Yeah, I'm okay Andy. Hope you're in good health as well and your family. Okay, well, let's move on. In my last video, I said I had the title of Rifleman. Where does a Rifleman come from? Well, to be a Rifleman, you've had to serve in one of two regiments in the British Army. The Rifles, or before that the Green Jackets, or the Gurkhas, which are our sister regiment. All the Gurkhas, all the battalions of the Gurkhas are called Rifleman as well. Now, where did it all start? Well, it all started from an Act of Parliament in 1755. 8,000 pounds yeah, was raised by this act to form four battalions to fight in North America to protect the settlers in North America. And this was going to be one of many firsts by this new regiment in, in the British Army. The first is that it was mainly going to be Albion, basically the British Foreign Legion. They're going to recruit from German and Swiss Protestants to fight French Catholics, French Catholics and their Native American allies. You know, sectarianism was quite you know, high in those days. Anyway, let's move on from there. You know, we shan't dwell on that. The other first was that their officers were also going to be German and Swiss experienced officers you know, who, you know, who fought with German Jaeger regiments you know, in the forest of Europe because most of you know, North America at that time hadn't gone through the deforestation of Europe yeah, so the European model of warfare at that time was two lines, uh, two armies lying abreast of each other, you know, firing out until you know whoever killed the most men, right? Yeah, within a hundred meters of each other, you know, one. But that quite didn't quite work in the forest, so they had to recruit experienced officers who knew how to fight in the forest. One of those gentlemen was a man called Henry Boucher. And he developed the tactics that is, was used by this young regiment, which 150 years later was developed by the rest of the British Army. So, <laughs> the recruitment of this regiment didn't quite go as planned. The reason why I say this is because they didn't get enough, there weren't enough you know, volunteers to fight for the British by French and German, although you know, who had been ruled by a Hanoverian king uh, at that time. So what they had to do was they had to go recruiting from you know, in Ireland where, where the British army was you know, recruiting. And in the UK, you know, in, in, in England, some, some parts of Scotland. Now, the rest of the British Army didn't quite like this. You know, you know, you, you you know, they didn't want to give away their best and brightest, what they considered their best and brightest. So, in the you know, so-called volunteers were, you know, they're cast off. You know, you know, the men, them that didn't quite cut it, as they say. You know, they're cast off, they're ragtag. Those who didn't you know, quite live up to their standard of uh, dress and discipline were then carted off to North America with these Swiss and German Protestants to form this new regiment. 
you know, because of that, you know, you know the wife has all, I've always had a reputation from the very, in, you know, those days of being mavericks, a, a quite a ragtag bunch. We're quite proud of that, actually. Yeah, and uh, it's yeah. So we started from the very inception of the regiment. Anyway, Henry Boucher was Lieutenant Colonel of the First Battalion, and he developed uh, the tactics to fight in. Yeah, that was the yeah of moving swiftly through the forest, boldly, uh, the tactics of skirmishing, yeah, where a skirmish is uh, one man move forward whilst his battle partner give him cover and fire and vice versa, with down to the general tactics used by most army these days, yeah, especially yeah, the rest of the British army. Took 150 years for the rest of the British Army to adapt, adapt those tactics, but yeah, they do now. So, anyway, let's move on. They're also maverick in the way that yeah, you know, they were trained as light infantry. Yeah, you know, they were formed as grenadier, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, regiments, you know, basically heavy, heavy infantry moving with lots of gear and so forth, but that wasn't quite, you know, feasible in the forest, moving through forest with heavy gear, not, doesn't quite, you know, add up, it took too long, he couldn't move quickly, so, Henry trained his battalion as a light infantry, in light infantry tactics, less equipment, uh, took off, some of them took off their, you know, Red coats and, and green coats instead. You know, uh, and they you know, didn't have boots, they wore moccasins, you know, trading through the forest in black leather trousers, you know, breeches, as they say. Anyway, they didn't stay the 62nd for long. Soon after they, you know, they were formed. There was two regiments, uh, the 50th and the 51st, one of them was called the Shirley's, uh, surrendered to the French. They were immediately struck off from the line of foot. So the 62nd moved up to be the 60th Royal Americans. And you sound better at being called the 60th than actually you know, 60th became 60th Rifles and sound better than being called a 62nd rifle. Yeah. Second doesn't you know, you know, add up. You know, doesn't doesn't have that ring to it. Yeah. Come, you know, because then you'll always become second. But the 60th, then you know, that stood out, you know, to me anyway. Now Well, I'm going to end it now. You know, the regiment is formed. They're developing tactics. You know, a maverick bunch. They've you know, been trained in light infantry tactics, and most of the weapons of that you now, the standard you know, issue for the British Army was muskets. Yeah, yeah I think it's called Bess. I can't quite remember the name, but it was accurate to uh, 75 metres. But, you know, the new rifles, the new, you know, uh, which were mainly German made at that time, right, well, you know, some of those you know, Germans brought over with them, you know, they all had their own rifles and they were used in the light companies. And said you know, basically a grenadier regiment, but with light companies. And so, you know, the tactics of using muskets and rifles were quite effective against the French. So, you know, it was, you know, it was quite so it developed within 
within uh, the 60th. Now, I'm going to end it here, but you know, with how we got our motto. Our motto is, oh, is sell it or do. And the motto came very early. You know, basically, you know, you know, it was a basically first major campaign. You know, Henry Boucher with his first battalion in the 60s, 60th you know, Royal Americans was under the command of General Wolfe. The siege of Quebec, 1758-59, and during that time, General Wolfe was so enamoured with the 60th that he did, you know, he gave them their motto, swift and bold, and they adapted that, and that is what every wife. To, yeah, greet each other with seller on the swift and bold. That is our motto, and had that is where it come from. From the very first, now, yeah, couple of years after inception of regiment, that is uh, the regimental motto: swift and bold. Very important to us. Yeah, very important. We move swiftly and boldly into battle, into combat, as they say. Anyway, I shall end it here. And if you'd like to hear more, I should be going on into the next chapter of the 60th Royal America. Yeah, until they were renamed the Rifle. So, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. You know, tell me where I've gone wrong or I'm not quite up to the standard of historical accuracy. Well, yeah, anyway, thank you once again, and I will see you anon.